Well, uh, thank you for that amazing introduction. Uh, of course, I'm from the world famous VA, uh, Phoenix <laughs> VA, which is the most famous hospital in the entire world. Uh, so today I'll be talking about some of the awesome work we're doing in terms of innovative application of analytics. I am the Chief Health Informatics Officer, which is the CMIO, or Chief Medical Informatics Officer equivalent at other health systems. Of course, I'm at the Phoenix VA, and uh, I am also clinical assistant professor at the University of Arizona College of Medicine in both internal medicine and biomedical informatics. So overview, we're going to quickly do a quick background of our local Phoenix VA facility, and then I'm going to just jump right into innovation. I have no disclosures, just here to share professional uh, experiences. And so Phoenix VA, you're going to see the side that Wolf Blitzer does not share with you today. So you'll be one of the few out there that know the reality of what's going on on the inside. We are huge, $650 million yearly budget, just your local Phoenix VA. We have community-based outpatient clinics that extend all the way to uh, Sholo, as we saw the photo of um, that area. We have main hospital right here in town, 7th Street Indian School Road, 212 beds, uh, 20 ICU, 46 nursing home, 48 mental bed, the rest general med surge. So, we like to think of ourselves as the original electronic health record because we've literally been around since the 1980s. And in the mid-90s, we uh, went with, um, I mean, we evolved into the Veterans uh, Health Information System and Technology Architecture, which then led to the creation of our current user interface, also known as Computerized Patient Record System, and that was out in the mid-90s. The reason that's important to know and the reason why we're original is because we too, like McDonald's, serve billions and billions. Our health record has billions of clinical orders, billions of prescriptions through it, billions of vital sign measurements, billions of text notes. We have 100,000 notes daily that are inputted into our system. That is why this slide is important because all this data from all these facilities, over 150 main hospital facilities, pour into a main data warehouse. And it's the extraction of that data that leads to innovation. Of course, I'm biased, and I had to throw this one up there. 19,000 physicians say we're number one in terms of electronic health record. But I think a part of that is 60% of physicians in this country at some point in time roll through the VA, whether as a student, resident, intern, fellow, attending. At some point in time, a lot of the doctors that you work with or have worked with or your own doctor has rolled through the VA system. So enough on VA. I think we've actually got some positive press here today. Is Jude still here? Maybe he can pass the word on uh, to Wolf Blitzer. Let's talk about innovation because this is my passion. This is why I do what I do. This is why I'm at Phoenix VA. And in order to talk about innovation and apply it to analytics, in my opinion, you got to first start with data relationships. It is these relationships amongst basic clinical data such as labs, vitals, medications, other aspects of clinical data. It's just a simple computation of these data, of this type of data that leads to prediction. So in my opinion, prediction is super easy. You already have the data pieces. You just have to figure out a way that makes it applicable. The role of your informatician, such as myself, uh, is to search these databases for relationship and find correlations and patterns in these data. So one of the projects I'm very proud of that we began here at our Phoenix VA with the City of Chandler Fire Department is a partnership pilot program that's currently ongoing and looking to expand with multiple cities throughout our city here, including Scottsdale, Tempe, Mesa. Uh, and basically what it is, it's all things telehealth, big data, prediction, population health, and action. And what makes this program unique is not just the use of what you saw with some of the telehealth tools, but it's the data component. How are we using the data? Well, we're using the data with something called a CAN score. So a CAN score is a care assessment need score, and it, this is a very busy slide, and I'm not going to have you obviously go through it all, but you can kind of tell that we're looking at major factors of your health. We're looking at your chronic diseases. We're looking at, you, are you enrolled in palliative care? We're looking at how many times you've seen your primary doc. We're looking at how many times you've been to the ER. And all of these are computed together and comes up with a CAN score. So this CAN score on the left is relative risk, and then the bottom um, uh, x-axis is a smaller component of the population. VA has studied this and has basically stated, if you're in the 99th percentile of a care assessment need score, you have a 72% chance of readmission in the hospital or death. So very high liability, very high risk, very sick individuals. So our partnership with the fire department is simple. Go ahead and cue the video, and then we'll talk right after.
Now, when Chandler firefighters and paramedics load into an ambulance, they're not always on their way to an emergency. Today, they're making a house call to a World War II veteran. Member, how are you? And they're connecting to the VA by telehealth means, uh, using of iPads and cameras, and that allows us to give instant access to veterans. Mr. Van Dammer, can you hear me? These tools bring all the resources and aspects of an in-person appointment into the living rooms of veterans. Hi, Barbara. Hi. Yeah, respirations are 20, non-labored. And allows them to go above and beyond. Plug them into other appointments or uh, in, give them medication changes. And he takes one of the five milligram tabs every day. Oh, like there's a half one for Monday, but I don't see the half ones on Wednesday and Friday. This combination of technology and community medicine is seen as an answer to the long wait times and negligence claims that arose after a 2014 investigation of the Phoenix VA system. It basically gives full access to everything the Phoenix VA has to offer in the veterans' home for those that need it the most. State Representative Bob Robson and Dr. Abbas Zaragon worked together to get this program off the ground. Not, not only is it a point of pride to have it in, uh, starting in my district. Take care, sir. Thank you. And also to have a, a progressive fire agency step up and, and recognize that this is a need they could fulfill and, and find a way to do it is really uh, great pride to me as well. Chandler is a pilot program, and Mesa, Scottsdale, and Tempe are all interested in setting up their own telehealth systems. So next time you see a truck like this in your neighborhood, they just might be helping a veteran in the comfort of their own home. For Arizona Capital Television, I'm Claire Caulfield. The fire department even had health and medical components, because I sure didn't. Some do. Okay, yeah, they are literally boots on the ground. So it makes sense to them because they're the ones that answer the 911 calls. And once upon a time, if you called 911 and they came to your home, they only had one algorithm. You were taken to the ER. Now, before this partnership, they had multiple different algorithms already in place. They already have these programs where you could be treated and referred. They could treat you and come back. They can even schedule a follow-up visit. So they do all sorts of home care type of work. And so we naturally have the telehealth side and we have the data side, and now with Boots on the Ground, it was a natural uh, partnership, and it's, in my opinion, should really, this relationship should take place all across the country with every fire department and every VA, and it started in Chandler, of which, of course, I live in Chandler. So we'll see what happens. Tempe has also signed their fire chief. We will be getting with them in about a month or two, and um, hopefully the rest of the city, and again, it'll expand. It's just natural progression of the use of tools, technology, data, and pieces that these health systems and fire department already have. Okay, let's talk about other awesome stuff that we have. So, this is a personal data mining tool for the individual. So if you're a dermatologist, you are most concerned about your highest risk patients. And your highest risk patients would be someone that has, for example, melanoma. So you could personally data mine within our electronic health record on your own, without the use of me or our informatics department, tell me and identify all the patients who, has no, who have had or have no derm follow-up appointments but have diagnosis of melanoma. So it not only looks at events that happen, but it looks at non-events. We've talked a lot about that today in terms of no-shows, but this is another tool that is out there in terms of a non-event. You have a diagnosis, but you did not have your follow-up appointment. Okay, more tools that we have in action. 10 VAs right now have uh, software in use called Cancer Tracker. This enhances alerting from radiology. It uses natural language processing. It just, uh, I mean, it does not only look at diagnostic codes, but it also looks at you know, NLP-based work. And so this is kind of a busy algorithm side, but in my opinion, as a patient, all that matters is step one, identify that alert. From there, the rest will take place on its own. All of you here, the health systems you're at, already have these algorithms in place. You have your follow-up appointment and all that. But with natural language processing and use of advanced software to identify keywords in radiology reports, that will be the first identification component that can be used to create cancer registries. Okay. Uh, our ER at the Phoenix VA is extraordinarily busy, and Wolf Blitzer did really nothing, but he didn't even put a dent in it. It's actually gotten busier since CNN has been around. So we have advanced uh, emergency department integrated software in place that uses real-time analytics 
crazy busy slide, but man, does this tell you so much. If you're red, you have a emergency severity index score of two, which one is you're almost dead, two, you're not quite almost dead, but it's severe enough and will likely be needing admission. So naturally, our inpatient hospitalist service, which I work on the hospitalist team as well, they can predict who will be coming up to the floor. So the colors tell you something, you know which doctor is seeing the patient, you know who hasn't been assigned, you know the diagnosis, you know if the patient is off the CT, who's the nurse, and one quick snapshot, you can see everything. Another busy slide, but I'm just trying to demonstrate the analytic tool. So you take that software that has all these input and output points, you know all this information, when the doctor came, what, every little thing you click on it creates a timestamp. So now we can go back and we can look at which facilities have had what kind of volume. You can look at the reasons for um, left without being seen. You can look at you know, what most of the bottom left you see all the way uh, bottom left there on the screen. Most people go home. So very, you know, the much smaller percentages get admitted. So the, the whole purpose of these tools and analytic de uh, uh, decision making, uh, clinical decision support, is that now you can look into staffing differently, expanding the ER. So a lot of what you see right now in terms of construction with our emergency room and expansion, opening of rooms was because of the information that we gathered from the emergency department integrated software over the last couple of years. All of this was in action before Wolf Blitzer. So it already has been in use and it has now been enhanced uh, as a result of further and further and continuing ongoing analytical aspects of these tools. We are now creating other aspects of the emergency department room such as having a fast track urgent care and that has its own staffing. So obviously the end outcome is that it leads to other things. Other types of analytics, uh, again, data points like we talked about initially with uh, hypertension, ischemic heart disease, and then diabetes, which is a real hot topic. Uh, so it's the um, context of this data that's important. It's not just gathering it. So when we first started, when I first came to Phoenix VA about two and a half years ago, the doctors were getting lists of patients that had hemoglobin A1Cs more than nine, meaning they're uncontrolled with their diabetes. The doctors would just basically give it back and say, I already know who these people are. They don't show up, they don't this, they don't do that. I know all of them. So we have reformulated and now we put clinical data con uh, into context. So now you know the last lab draw. When is the next one due? When was their last visit? If you're trending down, but even if your number is more than nine, well, you're probably doing well. So I don't need to see you for another six weeks, eight weeks. But if the numbers and labs are trending in another way, well, maybe I do need to see you. So data and context is extremely important to doctors. Isolated numbers is almost always meaningless. Again, back coming back to prediction with analytics, we can predict who will fail. And more importantly, you can predict who will not really benefit from another primary care appointment. Because if you're over 5,000 days of uncontrolled diabetes, it's probably time to get some mental health component, life coaching, or psychology eval uh, in place rather than just send you back to the PCP. So I think this slide kind of gives the whole purpose of what all of us do. The real clinical value is the goal of prediction. So it's all a matter of prevention or timely intervention. We talked about the stroke, timely intervention with use of telehealth, and now with data, care assessment, and need score, you can be at that veteran's home before he picks up the phone to call 911. So the road ahead to me is simple. We're gonna keep expanding the clinical decision support. We're gonna expand uh, population health organizations and how we care for actual populations of patients. And I think the research, um, um, research uh, application is gonna be huge. One day we'll laugh that this study that only cross-referenced 100 patients came up with this finding. And I know the Plavix study was mentioned earlier today. It should be millions of patient data reviewed to come up with findings that drug X is more efficacious than drug Y. And that is right around the corner of the research application. So a little bit of an advertisement to my own specialty. We've really only been around since 2013, but clinical informatics with physicians uh, in this role have barely only been board certified. So uh, just one more thing. Uh, in terms of clinical informatics, uh, our site at Phoenix VA is the fifth program in the country to be certified as a training site for clinical informaticians. So our first two fellows are wrapping up their uh, first year this year. So we are definitely at the cutting edge of innovation. I thank you. And uh, I'm wearing a bow tie, so that means I'm number one friendly. And two, you can easily find me. So let's chat and collaborate uh, once uh, we get the next break. Thank you very much.